ಆದ್ವಿತೀಯ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಬೇಕಕ್ಕೆ ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕಾವೇ ವೇಗವತ್ಮಸ ಪುಲೋಲ್ತಮ ಹೋಮ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ಬ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಂಬಂಧ ತಾವೇವನ ಎಸ್ ಎಲ್ ಟಿ ಮೊಬಿಟೆಲ್ ದೇಶ ಫೈವ್ ಬಲವೇಗೆ ಒಬ್ಬತ್ ಅದು ಆತ್ವಿದಿನ್ನ Tonight on First at Nine, this Thursday, the 18th of May, 2023. Supreme Sacrifice. Sri Lanka commemorates the 14th year of eradicating terrorism on the 18th of May, 2009. State celebration to commemorate war heroes to be held tomorrow. Meeting the targets. President Ranil Vikram Singh says he aims to complete domestic debt restructuring by September. Remain vigilant. Health authorities urge the public to keep their surroundings clean due to the increasing dengue threat. Drug bust. Another haul of heroin seized in seas off the southern coast. Suspects and contraband brought to the show. Alliance Finance Mitru Run Nai Seva Ve. Run Pound Cutter Propel Ek Laksha Hatta Daha Saka Eel Aatthi Karma. Obe Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain. Then, Nagamethi Pharmacy Inla Baga Tha Hacker. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana First at Night. ಮೆಮೋರಿಯಲ್ ಇನ್ ಬಾತ್ರಮುಲ್ಲ Here's a brief on how Sri Lanka claimed victory against terrorism. Tim Padeshe balaya ta hauru karagatta. On 27th of July 1975, Jaffna Mayor Alfred Durayappa was assassinated by a group of masked men when he arrived at the Vadraja Perumal Temple in Ponnele for his weekly worship. Five years later, liberation of Tamil Tiger Zeelam, commonly known as the LTTE, a militant separatist group that operated under the guise of a self-styled national liberal organization, claimed responsibility for his assassination. In 1983, the LTTE led by its leader Velu Pillai Prabhakaran carried out a deadly ambush outside the town of Thirunel Valley in Jaffna, killing 13 army personnel of the patrol 44 Bravo that included an officer and 12 soldiers. That was considered the commencement of a civil war that devastated the country's peace and harmony. For over decades, the ruthless terrorist group who fought for a separate state became responsible for bloodshed in Sri Lanka. Their suicide attacks led to the death of thousands of innocent civilians. the damage caused to society and the economy became immeasurable however the fourth phase of the elam war was the turning point under the guidance of then president mahinda rajapaksa an offensive was launched against the ltte after the terror outfit closed off keys luis gates at the marvel law reservoir on the 21st of july 2006 cutting water supply to 15 villages in government controlled areas From then on the tri forces continuously launched offensives against the LTTE and on the 18th of May 2009 the war came to an end following the death of LTTE leader Velu Pillai Prabhakaran during an attempt by the 53rd division of Sri Lanka army to capture him according to the minister of defense 28708 tri force personnel including commissioned officers and other rankers paid the supreme sacrifice to protect the country from brutal terrorists thousands of soldiers who fought for the country have survived but live with their lives with disabilities to commemorate the fallen and disabled war heroes 18th of may was declared by the national war heroes day by then president and commander in chief mahinda rajapaksa today the people in this country they are able to move around freely they are not threat from terrorism no terrorist threat and there is a certain amount of security in the country so the credit goes to all those people not only during the last war of 2 years and 9 months even prior to that the many members of security forces sacrificed their lives credit goes to all of them for making those commitments to ensure the safety and security of everybody in the country including the country itself 
I am proud and humble being able to command 200,000 army which spearheaded the war effort. But of course, after the victory, eliminating the terrorism, we expected the country to go on a new path and to ensure that the aspiration of the peoples are met by the rulers. But up to now, we don't see those changes have taken place in this country. So therefore, we hope and pray that country will go in the right direction. And I request the people of this country to ensure that they do their duty to now take the country off the clutches of the corrupt politicians and the corrupt political culture of this country. Not only Sri Lanka Army, the support provided by Sri Lanka Air Force and Navy to defeat the terrorists remains invaluable. I take this opportunity to thank all the Sri Lanka Air Force personnel who are under my command, the pilots, all the other officers and the airmen for their commitment to work as a team to produce excellent results. It is their bravery that was displayed that enabled us to do our work in a very exceptional manner. We did our work so well that even foreign air forces were wondering and trying to assess as to how we did it. And here I would like to remind the people that some gave their lives for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of our country. We cannot forget this. I advise the public, I kindly ask the public if they see a serviceman who has been wounded in battle in a queue in somewhere or going in a bus, please give them preference, give a seat to them, try and get them in front of the queue and show some kindness because that will actually help them and help their families to feel wanted. On this day, I would like to remember those who made the supreme sacrifice for this purpose to liberate our country from the LTT terrorism and also those who were injured permanently and their families, family members, I would like to remember on this day and also the serving people. During this effort, Sri Lanka Navy made a great contribution to stop the LTT arms and ammunition coming into the country. We are an island nation and everything has to come by sea. So the Sri Lanka Navy were able to stop this arms and ammunition coming into the country and LTT realized every round they fire, they will not get a replacement. As a result, the Sri Lanka Army, well supported by the Sri Lanka Air Force, was able to move forward very fast and from 2007 end the army moved very fast and LTT was comprehensively defeated. Now, the Director General of Health Services, Dr. Asalaguna Vardhana, once again urged the public to keep their surroundings clean, warning that the rainy season, which is expected to continue throughout June and July, can create more spaces for breeding for mosquitoes. In a backdrop of surging dengue cases, several dengue prevention programs were carried out in several areas of the island to curb the spread. In the latest updates on the prevailing dengue menace in the country, 34,801 dengue cases have been reported across the island so far within the year. According to the National Dengue Control Unit, 49.4% of the cases were reported from the western province, which is 17,201. Out of that number, Gampaha recorded the highest number of cases, which is 7,844. 7,302 were detected from Colombo, while 2,055 dengue cases were found from Kaluthara. Meanwhile, 12.3% of the total cases that were detected this year, which amounts to 4,303, were reported from the eastern province. Out of that number, the highest came from Batiklo, which is 1,485. Trinkumali recorded 1,420 cases. <laughs> In a backdrop of rising dengue cases, dengue prevention programs worked off in several areas of the island to control its spread. In Colombo, a dengue prevention program was carried out today in Jintupitia. Steps were taken by the Municipal Council to prosecute 18 house owners where dengue lava were found during inspections. In Piliandala, meanwhile, dengue inspection programs organized by the area MOH office were carried out in the areas of Piliandala, Tumbovila and Duavatta. In Kaluthara district, a dengue inspection program was carried out in 40 construction sites of Kaluthara, Maggona, Payagala and Beruvala. During the inspection, the PHIs took legal action against 12 construction sites where mosquito breeding spaces with dengue lava were found. Meanwhile, 200 sites including hotels, religious places, houses and businesses in the Bolgoda PHI division were subjected to inspections during the day. During the inspections, 
Two of the sites were fined, while 10 were issued with red notices to clean up the premises within a week. Outside of the Colombo district, dengue-related inspections were carried out by the health authorities in the areas of Manmune, Areampatya and Kankeunadai in the Batiklo district. Varsha Kale Apita, then Patanganathini, Idirata, Mivasa, Pauti Nepula, Vijay, and Junimasi Saha, Julimasi, the Etakota, Bedipura, Maduran Bovenestana, Etivino, Api and Ekang in Nepa, Tamatamangi, Givatu, Kariala, Ubasiro de Nama, Pirisu to Karagana, Eta, Itamatma, Karniko, Ilasi. Now, a local multi day fishing trawler and six suspects apprehended by the Sri Lanka Navy during a coordinated operation conducted with the State Intelligence Service were brought ashore to the Colombo port today to proceed with legal actions. Now, the fishing trawler carrying a hefty consignment of narcotics was seized last week off the southern coast of the island. A multi day fishing trawl and six suspects apprehended while transporting a hefty consignment of heroin were brought ashore to the Colombo port today for onward legal action. On the 12th of May, Sri Lankan security forces intercepted a local multi day fishing trawler transporting approximately 125 kilograms of heroin in the high seas off the southern coast of the island. The Navy stated that the hefty consignment of narcotics was taken into custody during a coordinated operation conducted with the State Intelligence Service. The joint operation has also led to the apprehension of six suspects aboard the local trawler. Now, President Ranil Vikram Singh says that he expects to complete the restructuring of domestic debt by September, which is an essential requirement prior to talks with the International Monetary Fund if at the first review. Now, during a meeting with the Federation of University Teachers Association, the head of state also said that the government is trying to solve as much problems of the public which are possible during the next few months. A meeting with the Federation of University Teachers Association was held at the Presidential Secretariat today under the patronage of President Ranil Vikram Singha. <laughs> කොටසක් රීඩයිරෙක්ට් කරා අපිට හොර එහෙම ගන්න. ඉතුරුයා කොහොමද බෙදන්න කියලා ඒ වලේ තීරණය කරන්න. සමහර ප්‍රොජෙක්ට්ස් අයින් කරන්න වෙයි. අනික් ප්‍රොජෙක්ට්ස් එතකොට ගෙනියන්න වෙයි. එතනයි තියෙන ප්‍රශ්නේ. වැටුප් ගැන මට පේනන හැටියට අපි විකල්ප යෝජනාවක් ඉදිරිපත් කරන්න සාකච්ඡාවක්. මම ඉතින් මම කතා කරන්න කිව්වා මොකද්ද අපි කරන්න කියලා. මේක එක එක වෘත්ති වලින් ඉදිරිපත් කරලා තියෙන්නේ. මෙහෙ විතරක් නෙමෙයි. ඒත් මේ කරන්න ඉස්සෙල්ලා කාන්න දෙකක් තියෙන එකක් තමයි දේශීය ණය විවගත කිරීම. ඩොමෙස්ටික් ඩෙට් රීස්ට්‍රක්චරිං කරන්න තියෙනවා. ඒක කරලා කතා කරන්න ुला Following the meeting with the President, the representatives of the Federation of University Teachers Association expressed their views to the media. Lanka Vishwidal Patadegato, Vishidalatu, Sidio to Achar Varunian, even put a theatre visit the Kakata San Pramania, Savin, Kanepurapa to the North, and the Janakin to Maikaguna, Vishishing, Vishramagi Achar, Rune, Tekpa Savi, in the lying with Piriswagi, then at a Pavatina, Purapa, Baham, Puruana, Hakiavasta, Pilipa, Pilipa, Katuka, and Cabinet Patrika, Cabinet Mandi, the Patrika, the Shikanata, Danamaka, and the Matupasian. Make a visit to Nakia. Shenika visit to Bakriva Gedak, Ganakatawa, Timine, 
जनाधिपति वर्ग आप पीली का ता बादु के अटल वाते का आचार और रूप पालक पालक वाले अर्पु देखने के किन्ह बाव पाले वेनी आईएमएफ सांसद ने वाला दी स्थिर विषय बाव में संधा लाभ देने बाव बोरों दुना साक्षात विधाम सार्थक है जनाधिपति तुम्हा तामत सेले के लिए मत पहला प्रश्न सियाल लटम आवश्य विषय तुम लाभ द now, electricity supply and all related services, the supply or distribution of petroleum products and fuel and health services have been declared as essential services once again. Accordingly, the Presidential Secretary Samar Nekan Naik issued a special gazette notification announcing the newly redeclared essential services under the directives of President Ranil Vikram Singh yesterday. The Gazette notification was published in accordance with the powers vested in the President under Section 2 of Essential Public Services Act No. 61 of 1979. Multiple announcements were made previously dated the 3rd of August, 3rd of September, the 4th of October last year and January 3rd, February 17 this year, declaring these services related to health, petroleum and electricity as essential services. Now, the Natural Hazards Early Warning Center of the Department of Meteorology today issued a heat index advisory effective for the next 24 hours for several places across the island. Accordingly, the temperature felt on the human body is expected to rise to caution levels at some places in the northern, north central, northwestern, and eastern provinces in the Monaragala district. The Meteorology Department, meanwhile, urged the public to stay hydrated. Take breaks in the shade as often as possible, limit strenuous outdoor activities and wear light weight and light or light coloured clothing. Stay with us for more news right after this short commercial break. Mahindra Yuvo, Timo Vitin. Swaraj Tractor, Timo Vitin. Now, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka said the Banking Act directions made by its Monetary Board on cash margin deposit requirements against imports have been revoked. Thereby, the revocation made pursuant to Sections 46.1 and 76.J.1 of the Banking Act No. 30 of 1998 is effective immediately. The Central Bank stated in a notice issued to licensed commercial banks that Banking Act directions No. 3 of 2022 dated 19 May 2022 on margin requirements against imports and Banking Act Directions No. 3 of 2022 dated 17 February 2023 on amendments to the Banking Act Directions No. 3 of 2022 on margin requirements against imports are hereby revoked with immediate effect. Now the Colombo Bourse ended lower today dragged by losses in industrials and communications services stocks. The CSE All Share Price Index settled 0.49% down to settle at 8,780.21 points. Expo Lanka Holdings and Sri Lanka Telecom were the top losers on the index, down 2.87% and 3.49% respectively. Trading volume on the CSE All Share Price Index rose to 43.4 million shares from 36.2 million in the previous session. Meanwhile, the S&P SL20 fell by 1.24% to end at 2,507.71 points. The equity market's turnover in the meantime fell to 629.9 million rupees from 699 million rupees in the previous session. In the meantime, foreign net investors were net sellers, offloading stocks worth 130.7 million rupees, while domestic investors were the net buyers, purchasing shares worth 582.9 million rupees. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against the other major currencies in the world. Now, oil prices dip today as the traders warily watched for signs of progress on talks to raise the U.S. debt ceiling after surging in the previous session on optimism over U.S. fuel demand.
Brent crude futures slipped 1% to $76.20 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude was down by 0.9% at $72.17 a barrel. A sharp plunge in U.S. gasoline inventories due to demand surge into the highest level since 2021 and optimism surrounding negotiations over the U.S. debt ceiling helped the main crude benchmarks settle more than $2 higher than yesterday. European equities were up and the U.S. dollar hit a new seven-week peak today, making oil more expensive for holders of other currencies. Also weighing on prices was the increased possibility of another interest rate hike by the U.S. Federal Reserve, which closely watches the number of Americans filing new claims for job benefits. Data issued today showed they fell more than expected last week, suggesting the labor market remains tight. The European shares rose today and Wall Street was set to open higher as traders bet that politicians in the United States would reach a deal to avoid a debt default. Wall Street closed sharply higher yesterday and the positive market sentiment continued during Asian trading. Japan's Nikkei reached a 20-month high after President Joe Biden and top U.S. Congressional Republican Kevin McCarthy expressed their determination to reach a deal soon to raise the government's $31.4 trillion U.S. dollar debt ceiling. The MSCI World Equity Index was up by 0.2% on the day. Europe's Stock 600 was also up by 0.6% and the London's FTSE 100 was up by 0.5%. Eurozone government bond yields also got a lift from the positive market sentiment, with the benchmark German 10-year yield at a 16-day high of 2.5%. Meanwhile, Wall Street futures were just a touch higher. S&P 500 futures were up by 0.2%, while the Nasdaq futures were up by 0.3%. And that's all the news we have for you this evening. Join us again tomorrow for the very latest news at the very same time. Until then, tune into our social media pages to get the very latest updates. Have a pleasant evening and good night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.